All right, so it's time to take you, it's time now to take you around the continent for some African reports. Right then, we're starting off uh, with a trip to Zimbabwe where Lala is on standby. Good morning to you, Lala. It's uh, the weekend and how are you doing? A very good morning to you too. And I know quite a few people that are celebrating that today is indeed a Friday. Okay, so on Wednesday, Cabinet met in Harare and they discussed a number of issues uh, that are happening in the country. And of course, they gave a, a brief uh, press statement on some of the issues that we discussed. So some of the issues were issue of public transportation. Cabinet said it had noted with concern that public, public transport uh, operators continued to flout COVID-19 regulations that were put in place. And these regulations were basically put in place to help curb this, the spread of COVID-19. And the cabinet promised that the law and order and relevant authorities will put, will increase rather a surveillance to make sure that these regulations are adhered to. And another issue, maybe the most important issue in the press briefing was the issue of education. Cabinet also said it is noted that there is a continued decrease of number of teachers that are reporting for duty and that to those that are reporting for duty they are actually not teaching so which means they go to the classrooms and actually not teach and this falls on the backdrop of uh, a continued um, standoff between the government and teachers there's been back and forth discussions between government and and and, and teachers on uh, um, better working conditions on better salaries and it has been going on for, for years now and um, this is quite worrying. So earlier on I spoke to Hopet Masaraure who is the president of Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe and he had this to say about the current state of, of affairs in the education sector in Zimbabwe. Schools opened, we rightfully predicted that more teachers were going to withdraw their services if the government did not uh, review the remuneration they are receiving. The government did not take it. Teachers pinned their hopes on the failed NJNC. They hoped that the National Joint Negotiating Council was going to produce a favorable outcome. But when government declared that they were not going to restore the value of all salaries, salaries which were stored in 2018, teachers will realize now there's no need to go to work for a government that doesn't appreciate the services they are rendering. Teachers are going to withdraw and very soon schools will be forced to close because there won't be teachers in these schools. Government only offered a 25% poultry increment, uh, which is, doesn't really meet the fundamentals, the basics, the basic needs of, of the teachers of Zimbabwe. Uh, as a more committed rural teachers of the Union of Zimbabwe, we are on, obviously ordinarily worried uh, with the deterioration in the standards of education we are providing to the people of Zimbabwe. But the mandate to provide education is for the government of Zimbabwe. It is the responsibility of the government to pay the teachers of Zimbabwe so they are motivated and they get back to the classroom and work. So that was. Opet Masaraure, the president of ATUS, and a union of rural teachers, as you heard there, one of his worries is that this continued standoff and this continued unresolved issue of salaries and, and, and better living conditions, the grievances that they continue to put across to the government, is actually contributing to the decline of the education sector in Zimbabwe. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Lala, with that. Uh, more updates in Zimbabwe, talking about teachers and fighting for their rights in terms of the salaries that they need to get. But we're not done yet, as we have Tedu in Johannesburg, South Africa, raring to go. Good morning, Tedu. Take it away. Good morning. Yesterday, Thursday, the bail application of the 14-year-old in Bilwi Secondary School girl who is accused of assaulting Lufunu Mavunga has been postponed to next week Wednesday and Thursday in the Tohoyando Children's Court. She will remain in custody of a youth center. Now, while the defense is arguing for the release of the minor back into the care of her parents, as she is having a hard time uh, away from the comfort of her family, especially her mother, the prosecution is opposing 
the release of the minor back into the community for safety reasons. The bill will again be heard on the 28th until the 29th of April 2021. The application was set for Tuesday but then moved to Thursday to allow the Tohoyando Children's Magistrate Court to appoint a suitable presiding officer. According to the National Prosecuting Attorney Spokesperson for Limpopo, it was moved from Tuesday to Thursday due to the unavailability of a magistrate. She said the only magistrate available was the one who had presided over the preliminary inquiry and the law required that a new magistrate take over the case. Also, the case was upgraded to Schedule 2, which means the teenager now is facing assault and grievous bodily harm charges. The MPA said the video of the incident depicts more than just common assault. Earlier this week, I made talks of bullying in schools and following the death of Lufunu Mavunga, a KwaZulu-Natal court sentenced a 16-year-old schoolgirl to 12 months of com community service and intense therapy after she was found guilty of assault with the intent to cause bodily harm. With a mandate to submit a written apology to the victim and the probation officer tasked with facilitating mediation between the teenager and the victim. The Funumavunga suicide after she was bullied has reignited the debate around violence in schools, with calls for action to be taken within the appropriate legislative framework. In other news, a 47 year old Kailita based composer has made history being the first black South African to be commissioned by Harvard University to write folklore songs in Isikosa for its Bilgli Club. Bongani Magatiana from Side C said he was approached by the institution last year after he was introduced to the director of choral activities at the university where he performed his composition Kayalami. The Harvard Glee Club is expected to perform Magatiana's new composition next month. Now this makes true the statement from Africa to the world. And that's it from me.